Hey you doing? I hope you're having a happy, happy, happy Septandy. Welcome to the basement. So what I've got here is my Radio Shack Color Computer 2. Now you may have seen the video I made on this. If not, I've put a little link up here. And uh, what I did was I took this from a 16K system up to a 64K system. And I also updated the, uh, the basic in the system also from Color Basic 1.3 to Extended Basic 1.1. Now since I've done that, there's a whole heap of games that I can play on this. Pretty much any game that was released for the computer for the color computer too, I can play now. But um, the problem I ran into is that there are not an awful, awful lot of games that you can play with the keyboard. You need to have a joystick for it. And although I've got an Atari style joystick that I can use with Commodore 64s and Amstrads and Ataris and all that kind of thing, the joystick ports on the back of this computer have a different little socket and also the technology they use is different because these are analog joysticks and um, the thing about the color computer well the whole range of color computers is that they all used analog joysticks and analog joysticks are by far and away superior for certain things but um, the funny thing about all this is that Many of the games for the color computer were converted from other systems. So they actually don't take advantage of the analog style joystick. And playing with an analog joystick, as I'll get into, can be more of a hindrance than anything else when, um, when you're playing those type of games. And it is, for all intents and purposes, a translator between the digital side of the joystick and the analog side of the color computer. At the heart of the Tandy analog joystick were two of these. This here is a potentiometer and its function is quite simple. It's got three prongs here. It's got an input, a ground, and an output and it's connected to the coco computer and the coco supplies it with five volts and as the user that being you or i turns this little knob it'll send back anywhere from zero to five volts to the coco now inside in the joystick as i say there were two of these one was for the horizontal axis and the other one for the vertical axis and um the way it worked was pretty much like this if you can imagine the screen on your Coco computer being, just for simplicity's sake, divided into five, five portions across the horizontal and into another five portions across the vertical. So this here is our horizontal axis and this here is our vertical axis. Uh, vertical. And um, then, just for simplicity's sake, what we'll do is we'll call this here one volt, two volts, three volts, four volts, volts five volts and here one volt two volts three volts four volts and five volts so i think you can see where this is going and um, on our screen we've got 25 squares and we can position our little x for example or our little man or a little pointer or whatever in any one of these squares with two coordinates so imagine that the x-axis is set to 3 volts and the y-axis is set to 4 volts. Well, we go 3 volts on the x-axis, 4 volts on the y-axis, and we find that our pointer is here. Now, if we change the, the y-axis and the x-axis so that the y-axis, for example, being the vertical, is at 1 volt and the horizontal x-axis is at 5 volts, our pointer goes up to here. So, using two potentometers, we can plot any position in two-dimensional space, to get really technical about it. <laughs> we can plot anything in two-dimensional space, two-dimensional space being the computer screen. So um, you, you could, in a game or in an application or whatever, uh, move using these, you could move uh, an object around on screen and you could pretty much kind of teleport it from one point to another by, by quickly moving the potentometer, 
it would teleport across. It didn't actually have to travel across the screen. It could go from one corner down to another corner very quickly. Now, of course, you weren't using these little potentometers like this. They were integrated into joysticks, so you didn't see them. But as you move the joystick up and down, it would turn this the full um, the full rotation, and that was how you got your uh, movement on screen. So a digital joystick is a much different beast than your analog joystick because it's it's actually it's much simpler. It's based on switches. It's like um, a light switch. It's either on or it's off. So there are four switches inside in this joystick. And when you push up, for example, you turn on the up switch, which lets the computer know that uh, it's to move the little man or the little pointer or whatever up the screen or down or left or right or whatever way. And um, it differs from the analog joystick in that as the analog joystick, as I was saying, would allow you to teleport uh, well, in for, for want of a better word, to teleport from one point to another. This, you actually have to, when, when you push it, whatever object it is on screen moves pixel by pixel to another point in that direction. It's actually, while, while an analog joystick is like a teleportation type thing to move around, this guy is very much like you or I. It needs to walk or drive to places or whatever but it needs to follow a path to get there. It can't just teleport itself there. Okay, so here we are with Cater Caterpillar Attack for the color computer. And this here is my Franken battle. It's a cobbled together thing I made up with two potentometers to try and mimic an original um, controller from Tandy. So um, as you can see here, as I turn this, the little character on screen goes to the left and right because it works in the same principle I was speaking about before. Uh, when it's turned over this way, the current coming back or the voltage coming back to the color computer is at zero. When it's turned this way, it's at five volt. And then anywhere in between, it's obviously a variation between zero and five volt. Here we are, we're plugged in and our digital joystick locates this guy in the center of the screen because the joystick is centered. When I push to the left, he goes right to the left. And when I push to the right, he goes right to the right. He goes left to the left and right to the right. So um, that's, that's what you have here. What that device is effectively doing is, it's only providing three voltages. It's providing zero volt, two and a half volt, and five volt. That's what it's doing. It's eliminating all the other ones that in certain games would mean anything. What I'm after doing is I'm after plugging in one joystick to each port. I've got my Franken paddle plugged into player two and this guy plugged into player one. So you see here to move left and right. I've moved right, right the way over and now to move back. And if I want to stop, I, I need to turn the dial completely in one direction and completely in the other one to change direction. Whereas with this joystick, it works the way it should. I move up, down, left and right, and it works exactly as you would expect a joystick to because it's just, this game has been written for this type of a joystick. Okay, so this is a little test program that's provided some one line of, line of code that's um, given in the documentation for making this board. And it's a test program to see that it's working properly. So. I've set it running and I'll show you what it does with the franking controller. You see here that I have the value 27 on one side of the screen and 35 on the other side. Now this value here is for the x-axis and this value here is for the y-axis. So the left and right and the up and down. As I explained before, uh, zero is all the way to the left and 63 is all the way to the right. And you can see here in real time that as I turn the dial, this number changes. And on the other side, the number equally changes for the y-axis. Now with the little um, device I've made here, all this is dumbed down. And I can show you just by plugging this in, you'll see straight away that the first thing that happens is these figures change to 31. 
So that's the middle position. 31, 31 would give me 31 across the x-axis and 31 on the y-axis. 31 across the x-axis and 31 across the y-axis, which would be in the middle of the screen because our joystick is centered. Now, if I push to the left, I get zero on the x-axis value, back to 31 in the middle, and to the right, I get 63. So that's over here. And again, on the y-axis, if I push up, I get a value of naught to the top. And if I push down, I get a value of 63. And uh, that's, that's what it does. We, we go from a myriad of locations just to, um, just to basically to the eight directions. And um, what it comes down to is how the game has been programmed for the color computer. So in, in a game, I showed you like um, a Caterpillar Attack there, it's been programmed to use the, um, the different values, the different coordinates across the x-axis. But uh, in a game like Galaxians there, it's not. It only uses left, right and up and down. Okay, so you've seen it working now, but I bet you're wondering what witchcraft animates this little device. Well, to be honest with you, there's not an awful lot to it. This guy here plugs in to the joystick here. This guy here plugs into the back of the tandy. And it works thanks to this little guy. It's a 4066 a quad bilateral switch. And what it does is this, the way it's been set up at least, if you can remember uh, when we were speaking of how potentometers work, and we we're talking about the screen, and that across the horizontal axis and the uh, the vertical axis, we were speaking about five volt to the left, five volt uh, to the right, and uh, the way we could move a cursor around on screen. Well, this guy provides three voltages, zero volt, five volt, and 2.5 volt. So what we have is we have our left, our right, and we have our middle. And again, across the the vertical axis, we have zero volts, five volts, and 2.5 volts in the middle. So what's happening is this guy here is working off voltage dividers. And the way a voltage divider works is this. You've got your five volts, you've got your zero volts or your ground line. And what they've done is they have joined these together with two resistors like this. They have a hundred kilo ohm resistor here and another hundred kilo ohm resistor here. So in the center, the way a voltage divider works is when a configuration like this is set up with a voltage and ground and they've been joined together in this manner with, um, with two equal value resistors, you end up with half of wh whatever voltage there is being fed out along this way. So we end up with our 2.5 volts. Now, so what's happening when the joystick is at rest and when there's no motion being given to it left, right, up or down, 2.5 volts is being fed to the color computer on both the vertical and the horizontal axis. So you end up with the cursor in the middle of the screen. Now, if you move the joystick, for example, to the left, what happens is this little chip will break the connection between the five volts so that only zero volts is fed out. And zero volts on the horizontal axis uh, gives us left-hand side. And again, if we move to the right, the opposite happens. The five volt remains connected, but the zero volt is broken. So five volt comes out and brings us to the right. And then there's another setup like this on the chip for the horizontal, for the vertical side. So you end up with zero volts going to the top and five volts to the bottom and 2.5 volts in the middle. So we end up with the, the cardinal positions on the joystick and we end up with the center position. So um, that's pretty much how it's converting uh, analog to digital. It's using, using the, the analog the way it was designed to be used, but instead of using every voltage on the array from zero to five volt, it's only using zero volt, five volt, and one voltage bang in the center. And uh, that's, how, that's how this particular little device works. And um, now I didn't come up with this design myself or anything because I'm, I'm far from being able to do anything like that. But what I did do was I found this on the internet and this has been floating around for years. For years. It's um, from, I don't know what magazine, 
but I will find it again and leave a link in the description. But it's by Robert Lee Hawkins. And it's a two page document really because there's a couple of ads in it that explains pretty much every, everything about it. And uh, they've also given a little um, schematic of it, how to wire it up. But uh, there was one little mistake on it, on it made. So I'll just point that out in case you're going to make this yourself uh, that you don't run into the same problem I ran into. Um, pin number four is going to ground, but it should go to ground with a 100 kilo ohm resistor between pin four and ground. And uh, if you build it the way it's shown on the um, diagram here, it won't actually do any harm or anything. But uh, what will happen is the joystick will always be at zero volts. So on the, horiz on the horizontal axis, you'll always be to the left hand side. But um, that's that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's it's a great little device. It works well. It does what it's supposed to do. So um, what I'm going to do actually, the reason that I built it on a board that's twice the size I needed, was that I'm going to build another one right here beside it with a second connector and a second joystick port. And the color computer has two joystick ports on the back of it. So that way I can easily play any two player games that I may be playing that kind of way. And that's what I'm gonna do with that. So that's that. So look, I will leave you at that. And I will say, have a very, very happy Septandi. <laughs> if it's a holiday, I'm not sure, but anyway, have a happy Septandi. Watch whatever videos are out there on it. If you feel the need, subscribe. Uh, give us now a thumbs up or give us a thumbs down and don't subscribe or uh, leave a comment or don't leave a comment or I leave it all up to you. Do whatever you wish to do. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. So between this and then, take care of yourselves. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.